welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. In today's lesson, we'll be learning about the major triads or major chords on the white keys. This will correspond to the major five finger patterns that we learned from the previous lesson. We'll then look into a technical exercise in a short piece that will use these major triads. A triad is a three note chord. As you can see in the diagram here, the three notes are stacked right on top of each other. They can be all line notes or all space notes, meaning that a note is skipped in between the notes in the triad. The three notes of the triad are named the root, the third, and the fifth. The fingerings are 5-3-1 on the left hand and 1-3-5 on the right hand. This pattern of the root on the bottom, third in the middle, and fifth on the top, it's called the root position. Remember the major five finger patterns from the previous lesson. Notice that a major triad is just one, three, and five of the major five finger pattern. We skip a note in between. More precisely, there are two whole steps between one and three, and a half step and whole step between three and five. This pattern is important to remember when trying to determine the triads for the other six major white keys. Using the keyboards we have used for the major five finger patterns, fill in the blanks for each keyboard to form a major triad for each of these keys. Using the whole, whole, half, whole patterns to help you determine the notes. For example, in D major, we start with D, one, go up to two whole steps, which will give you F sharp as the third, then go up a half step, then a whole step, which will give you A as the fifth. Now you have a D triad chord in its root position. You can check that you have filled in the correct triads for each key here. For each one of these triads, use left hand 5-3-1 and right hand 1-3-5 to play. Some people find triads difficult to play because it's hard to play just 1-3-5 without also hitting the skip notes in between. We have to learn to isolate our finger muscles and focus more on 1-3-5 than 2-4. It also has a lot to do with your arm weight. The more you can relax your arms and drop into the keys, the more accurate you will be at playing these triads. Now, let's try dropping your arms into the keys with the E major triad. You'll probably find that your 2 and 4 want to participate too. or your third finger doesn't want to press the key down at the same time as one and five. Try this exercise. Let's do this on the right hand first. Try playing just one and three and feel the center of focus being at the base of your third finger and in the middle of the back of your wrist. Drop your arm into the keys as you play. Let the 
weight of your arm carry your fingers down into the keys? Now play three and five. Feel the same center of focus. Arm weight into the keys. Now play all three notes, shifting the center of focus once again to the middle of your palm, dropping your arms into the keys. So as you can see, your third finger here really act as the balancing point of your hands and the three notes you're playing as well. The more you focus on that third finger, the easier it will be to play the triads without effort. Now try applying this technique to the other triads. Next, we will look into a short exercise that will help you switch back and forth between the major five finger pattern and the major triads. Before we look into this short exercise, let's take a look at the differences between a broken and blocked chord. As you can see on the diagram here, just as the name suggests, a broken chord is a triad chord broken into its individual notes. Each note is played separately like a melody. In a black chord, all three notes are played together simultaneously. In this exercise, we will alternate between the major five finger patterns, broken chords, and black chords, and go through each key. Review your keyboards for each white keys if necessary. Remember to switch the fingerings from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 1, 3, 5 when you get to the broken and black chords. that will help you play the black chord easier is to lift right before the chord and drop your arms into the keys, again focusing your center at the base of your third finger. You can practice this exercise starting with a fairly slow tempo and then go through all the keys. After you're comfortable with the notes and patterns with all the keys, set your metronome to quarter note equals 60, then gradually work your way up to a faster tempo. In this next section of the lesson, we will learn about tonic and dominant chords. We will then look into a short piece that will combine the major five finger patterns and the major triads using the tonic and dominant chords. When we discuss major five finger patterns, we talked about that the first note of the pattern is the tonic and the fifth note is the dominant. Tonic and dominant chords are triads that are built from the tonic and dominant notes. In the key of C major, a tonic chord is a C major triad. Building on the tonic note C with its third and fifth. A dominant chord is a G major triad, building on the dominant note G with its third and fifth. This of course can be applied to other major keys as well. For example, in D major, the tonic chord is a D major chord spelled D sharp A. The dominant chord is an A major chord 
Spell A C sharp E. The short piece shown here on the screen uses the C major five finger pattern. The left hand alternates between the tonic and dominant chords to harmonize the melody. Practice going back and forth between these two chords a few times to review your arm motion and the center of focus. difficult things about playing a melody on the right hand and chords on the left hand is that the left hand has to know exactly where the next chord is without too much thinking. This requires that you develop muscle memory of the distance between the two chords. One good way of knowing that distance is to be able to play just the root of the chords and be able to go back and forth. Once you can do that comfortably, add the thirds to the chords. Remember we're focusing at the base of the third finger and as well as the middle of the palm. Then we can play the whole chords. You can also try this with your eyes closed to enhance your muscle memory. The right hand should be fairly straightforward. Let's count to quarter notes and start with a slow tempo. One, two, together. A word of caution, do lift each chord after counting four and moving quickly to the next chord. The idea is to keep the music going without having to stop and wait for the left hand to change position. When you're ready, let's play this piece from top to bottom. lesson, we have learned about the major triad and how to apply it to all seven of the major Y keys. In your homework, you will find one more technical exercise and another short piece that will help you develop your techniques and also get yourself more familiar with these major triads. See you in your next lesson.